Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to SDGC. Uh, my name is Derek. I am here with fellow SDGC members John and Justin. What's going on, guys? I'd rather be playing Smash. You, well, that's good because we're going to soon. Uh, we are here, in fact, to talk about Smash. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate came out um, just under a week ago as of time of this recording. Uh, I have taken a week off of work just Fucking to dedicated. burn through this game. Well, Fucking you know dedicated. what? So here's the thing. So I was going to write the review for SDGC, uh, which just went live today. Um, and my thought process was we didn't get a review code, right? We had to, I had to start playing on day one. And this is not a game that you can like play for a day or two, like Ooh, casually not. and have an idea enough to write a review. Like I needed this time. Um, and this is from somebody who has been very, very heavily involved in the casual and competitive side of the franchise. So Dude, this, um, this is a meaty fucking game. I but, have, yeah, I have spent thirty hours with the game. I do not have all the characters unlocked. I have wow. not. I have not. You got to cheese that shit, mode. Justin. You got to cheese that shit. I like doing classic. I'm, I'm actually enjoying that part. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that later on when we're discussing more in depth. But yeah, like there's a lot <laughs> to smash. Yeah. So there are what I, I don't even remember the number. It's like seventy something characters 74. total, right? Seventy four characters total. That's not counting Piranha Plant, who's announced to be free DLC coming up soon, um, Joker. or Joker from Persona Five as the first of the five DLC characters. What a mind um, job that was! I know. So this game basically. So the way I put it in my review, I said this is a game that defies possibility um, because it just it shouldn't exist. There's there's almost no way it feels like for a game to have this much packed into it, this many characters, this much music, this much single player content, this much flexibility in modes. It it is almost overwhelming when you first turn it on. Like, what did you guys do when you first turned the game on? Like, where did you go I first? I went straight to classic mode to start unlocking characters. Uh, and then I uh, dipped my toe into World of Light. And I've got some opinions on World of Light. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, like, yeah. So, but yeah, no, I, I, I ran straight. I like, you know, I'm a long time Smash guy. So, like, you know, the first thing I do whenever I, you know, whenever there's a, a blessed day when a new Smash game comes out is I immediately start unlocking characters as quickly as I can because I want to get online. I want to get my mains, which motherfucking Mega Man, uh, Samus. Um, you know, actually, although I'm not really feeling Samus this time around, I'm, uh, dude, I've Simon has stolen me away, man. Like, Simon I, has been a ton of fun to play. Yeah. Simon is really good for, uh, forcing opposing players to keep their distance and then punishing them when they get close. I like to go in for that. Uh, I like to go in. I, so w what I like to do is I like to keep them at bay with the crosses, throw those crosses. Then I'll, I'll do a little jump, throw some holy water, keep them at bay. And when they come in, I'll, uh, I'll double tap real quick and uh, uh, Sam or uh, Samus Jesus. Um, I still want to say Samus. Simon has got a great dash move. Um, oh, his dash move and then his uh, his down tilt, uh, his yeah. slide kick into the jump kick is. Oh, this is he's really got the good. best slide kick in the game. By Easily, far. just because you've by got far. that immediate follow up is really good. <laughs> well, and um, what I like about Simon is that he is like he comes off as overpowered, but he's just balanced enough to where like you could you know if, if you know his move set and you're familiar with you know with with what that character can do you can you can overcome him with little problem um so as opposed to, as opposed to somebody like little mac who you know like you know whenever you're fighting like you can tell somebody who's playing a skilled little mac as opposed to somebody who's just mashing b over and over yeah um so but yeah i know i like i um i am far more impressed with the balancing and ultimate than i have been in past titles yes out out the gate um so for those of you watching this who, who don't know um i am a a to or a, a tournament organizer for the state of kentucky um i run and help organize the the monthly tournaments here in louisville as well as the regionals for the state brag about um, it why don't you man brag about well it. i mean i'm not the big guy i'm just <laughs> one of the people but but anyway so i've been a, i've been very heavily involved in the competitive scene um, all through, I started that in Smash 4, um, but so this is the kind of thing, like when I went in, one of the things I've been very in tune with is listening to all the competitive players talk about balance and seeing what the people in my scene are saying, because um, the first week is always the Wild West, right? Nobody yep. knows who's good and bad, and it's, it's interesting because it does broadly feel very balanced out the gate, and the only things we're seeing is um there's some concern that um incineroar 
is probably in need of some love. It's sure. Um, so Incineroar, I'll tell you right now off the bat, and and I, since Justin just just got back, I'd love to get his opinion too. But yeah, I, th- I think right off the bat, Incineroar and Bayonetta need nerfs. Like like period. Like like no, it, actually, Incineroar is one of the one of the worst characters in the game. Dude, people I are feeling. Did, well, well, not for me, <laughs> not for me. Yeah, no, dude, I, dude, Incineroar fucking owns me. Like yeah. I mean, that could be just a difference in the play styles of the more competitive players versus the more casual players. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's, because that's... I I know for me, like playing as Incineroar, like it feels like God mode. <laughs> some sometimes, like yeah, I'm not particularly good at Smash. Um. But I love Incineroar. Um, also, I he's an, he's animated so well. Like like there's oh, a he's like, so, it's, yeah. he's, a he's one of those boy. he's one of those characters that just seems like a lot of an extra level of love yes. <laughs> when it went into. Um, and I like him a lot. Well, I got the same. I get the same feeling with with like you know characters like Simon and Ridley. Um, just because you know I you know they're you know they're, they're new characters. They're making their debut, especially so, a character like Ridley who has. So, you know, go, go ahead. Let let me let me go through a story um, about Ridley, um, because I have been requesting uh, Ridley and Smash since the second I saw him in the opening for Melee. Good man. Uh, back in two thousand one, uh, Metroid has always been one of my favorite franchises. Uh, Metroid Prime is my favorite game of all time. I was very excited to unlock Ridley. Um, oh, I bought the Amiibo. I I don't buy Amiibo very much but i bought ridley I mean, yeah <laughs> I, I can see behind me uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i know you guys do um yeah but if you do i I'm only like, Man. i only have a few of the metroid theme ones i was very excited for ridley um i have like 60 something characters before you know his challenger thing shows up I had to fight him eight times at the challenger's approach before I could unlock him. He's a tricky character. It was, <laughs> it was zero, suit, zero suit Samus for me. I like seven or eight turn. I just could not handle zero suit Samus. You I know couldn't. what's funny is the character unlocking to me. And I, I talked to a bunch of people about this. It seems like the difficulty of the challenger is almost at random um, yeah. because I would have ones where they were so easy. I watched a buddy unlock the inklings okay he got into his challenge match with inklings it's on moray towers right which it, the way it starts is like this and one is a little lower and it's like the little scaffolding going down so you start at the top inkling used their up b as soon as the word go went right up b over off the stage yeah. to their own death yeah, right perfect yeah and perfect. yet perfect. and yet then i go in and do a fight against say um you know roy and he's comboing me and and just moving me around to the screen like a pro player, you know, like people I play in tournaments. And it's like, what is going on here? Yeah, I, I went up against Mr. Game and Watch as Incineroar. He did an infinite juggle on me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's I, I've seen a lot of talk about unlocking characters in Smash. It's kind of been a very hot topic, um, yeah. Yeah. which I think is interesting. I personally like unlocking the characters but the difficulty of some of the challenger matches has yeah, been I, very frustrating well, it seems at random so i think that yeah. kind of seasoned my my opinion of it as well because i mean again i'm an old school smash fan from way back um way back uh and you know that's always been that you know that, that that's pretty much always been the score for smash is you know you got to go through and, and unlock the characters and i get it and i get that it's it's you know the, the core gameplay loop of a smash game is so compelling that you know in the end you don't mind doing it but at the same time i do see the i do like jason schreier caught a lot of flack for you know and by the way guys can we leave fucking jason schreier alone for having a yeah. mild video game opinion come <laughs> yeah. on like, i Jesus mean i fucking christ people I um, see. I see. I absolutely see where people are coming from. I do because I, know, I mean, I know, people, I know are, people are like, I want to be able to pick the character I want to play as and start playing Smash with three buddies on my couch. I, you know, having said that, that's never the way Smash is going to be. So I, no. I, I, I accept that. Um, I, I feel like part of it is if if I had no time constraints, right? I would sit down. I would love to go through and play classic mode and unlock all these characters. Um, I would, I would be in, in love with that idea. People just got home. Um, but part of the problem is like I had, um, an event on Friday night where we needed setups for, um, I was 
uh, we know we had our first weekly um, in the scene was tonight. The first monthly I'm helping run is on Saturday. Like, we need setups to have all the characters, you know, and we need because, you know, you can't use a system for a tournament if not all the characters are available for people to play. And if you're really plugged into that tournament scene, then the pressure is even higher to have all the characters to practice and to understand a little better because money's on the line when you show up. Um, so I, I think I think that adds a little bit of pain and pressure in the first week or two. But in the in the grand scheme of things, it's 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 a no it's a it's a non story to me. Yeah. Can we I, I know oh sorry, uh John, do you wanna go ahead? Well no, I was just gonna say can we can we touch on World of Light? Because I, I feel oh, like yeah. I, I feel like that's something that really needs to be dissected for okay. a minute. Well, but so before we get to just that, can first, I just say yeah. something about classic? Um, classic I, is what I, I, I wanted to talk about first, got, actually. Yeah. Oh, I've okay, got, well, yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Let's talk about classic first. I've got, I, I've got some strong opinions on World of Light. Um, but classic mode Great. has been what I have been playing for a substantial portion uh, since the game has come out, which usually I don't touch classic very much because um, it's usually just dull nine random, random matches or something yeah. like that the way they approach classic in this game has injected so much more personality into that mode and has made it has made me want to play it with every character aside from just the uh, to unlock every character um for those that you know are listening that don't know classic now is themed individually per character you know what I love um, about that, Justin, is that if you play through as one of the Street Fighter characters, right? Uh, Ryu or yeah. Ken, they'll, uh, Ken's actually people. isn't. Ken's isn't. Ken. Ken's isn't. Ken's, okay, so it's so Ryu. Ken's, yeah, Re, uh, Ryu's theme. Uh, Ryu's is really cool. It's everybody's wearing karate gis. But, when you no. fight them. No, or it's it, um. Or is no. it Ken? Uh, Ken's is all like Echo fighters and like bitter rivals. Like Ken's is like theme is like a bit I, I thought there was one where I thought there was one where they're all wearing all your opponents wearing no. karate geese. Reuse reuse is really cool. It's all stamina matches. Nah, instead, that makes sense. Instead of the knockout matches, all on the flat uh, tournament like uh, layout. Where the um, hell did I get the karate geese from? Though I don't know. I don't know, man. Each stage, each stage has a remix of a different Street Fighter Two theme. And they chose yeah. colors for each of the characters to make them look more like Street Fighter characters. So Zero Susamus looks like Kami. Uh, Donkey Kong looks like Blanca. Like it's really cool stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. I don't know. Two of my and two then, of my favorite classic modes so far have been um, Kirby's is really good and different because Kirby's everyone starts with like thirty five percent damage or something like that. On, and then it drops a bunch of food immediately. Mm -hmm. So everybody's rushing from the start to eat all the food uh, oh, to God. heal all the damage they started with. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, Kirby's Kirby's uh, ends with a boss fight against Marks, um, against Marks from Kirby Superstar. Yeah. Oh, the Marks right, fights okay. are really cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, not not Karl Marx, uh, famous <laughs> famous person. Um, and then Bowser's is Bowser only fights red opponents up to his his second to last fight is Rathalos from Monster Hunter. Um, and then he goes to fight Mario at the very end. So it's all all red. Um, everybody who's red has to go. Um, so like, like there's a little personality in these classic modes that are designed for every individual character. You, you know, and a boss, you know, a boss that I was really disappointed to not see return was uh, Porky. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, yeah. Porky, there's, there's it no feels Porky. like. There's a lot of bosses in the game because um, what there's aside from like Master Hand and Crazy Hand and um, Rathalos, Dracula, Rathalos, Dracula, Dracula, Marks, Giga Bowser, uh, Giga Bowser, Bowser Ganon, Ganon. Ganon. The Ganon boss, Gan the Ganon boss was cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ganon, Ganon, because because it's basically uh, Ocarina of Time. Ganon. Yeah, you got to get behind and hit the tail. Yeah, um, it's a really um, good design too. They updated that design really well. One of the two robot bosses from Brawl's Subspace Emissary, um, Galliam, is back. Galliam, yes, but um, Duon is not the other one, which is weird because that seems like it would be easy. And then there's, the new, me, then there's the new boss, Gahim. The uh, Galliam, um, yeah, Gal or Galliam, uh, but but um, there's no uh, there, there was no but what and what's weird is that they kept. I don't know if you guys have heard it, but the boss theme, but the Smash Brothers boss theme for Porky is in the game. Huh. See, it's weird it's, to me. I mean, like every it. piece of music that's yeah. ever been. Well, in there's no Porky, but but, but because, because here's the thing, that that music is exclusive 
it, it, that, that's not his boss theme from Mother 3. That's his boss theme from Smash Brothers. Yeah. The music is in the game, but the actual boss fight against Porky is not. I thought that was very strange. It's weird to me. I understand why, like, Ridley isn't a boss anymore because he's a character. I understand why P.D. Piranha's not since he's part of the final Smash for Piranha Plant. But it's weird to me that, like, other bosses like Rayquaza and, and Duan from Subspace Emissary weren't back and that Porky like isn't back. It's what weird that like Metal Face, would have made an amazing boss. Yeah, Metal Face was a was a stage boss character in uh, Gaur Plains and isn't um, like a boss. Like it just seems like they could have repurposed that. But I'm not going to complain because what they're doing is already like so much more variety. I'm used yeah. to just here's yeah. eight random fights and then Master Hand. Um, it's just that R- Rathalos is such a random choice. Looks not like- if Monster Hunter ends up as a DLC character. I hope not. Please no. Also, what? They, they no. Actually, I will no. fight you, John. I'm fighting the no. writer. The Japanese commercial for Smash actually goes out of its way to show Rathlos, and I'm pretty sure he exists just for that. Like to be able to Monster to be in the is Japanese huge market. right no. now, yeah. and and, and those Japanese games have marketing. been doing really well. I mean, not, like yes, World was amazing, but like people forget that we just had Generations Ultimate hit on the Switch. So, um, no, I, I think. I think it, it, it makes sense in that regard. But um, but yeah, so classic mode was really, really interesting because there's a ton more variety, way more unique bosses, way more unique paths. And it to me, this will be the first time I probably play classic mode with every character, um, you know, or that I feel like I want to rather yeah. than just checking off check boxes. Yeah, so. and uh, I, I'm the same way. I have played it through a lot. I've almost exclusively just been playing classic. And I also, I, I like that it's a few less fights than it used to be before, so yeah. it makes it, like, real quick to go through. Um, the theme, more digestible. And, and, and the theme works better, because you don't have to start stretching it as time goes on. Um, you know, I, I, I think the classic mode is really, really a, a huge improvement, and for something called classic, it's, you know, surprising that that would be one of the areas that has improved so much. But yeah. Um, now I'm very happy with that change. We get to move on to World of Light, which is the game's adventure mode. Um, oh man, this is a lot meatier than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's not necessarily a good thing though. Mm, so here's uh, let me. I'll start with the comments I made in my review. Um, I've put maybe just shy of twenty hours into World of Light, into the adventure mode so far. Um, I have come to realize. I thought I was I was almost done, and then I've come to realize that I am nowhere close to done. Yeah, it's like a forty um, hour mode. It's like it's, it's it's hefty, um, and it pulls a fake out on you, uh, a, a classic Sakurai fake out. So, um, but that makes me realize like the amount of time I've put in that I'm maybe halfway there. This is not. I don't think an adventure. The adventure mode is something that you were intended to try to blaze through and beat quickly. Um, I get the feeling that the intention is to play it a bit at a time. So for those who haven't, who haven't played it yet, um, the adventure mode puts you on this big overworld map. Um, and you start as just Kirby and you've got to travel along the map and, and win these, these spirit fights, which are basically kind of like new versions of the event matches from older games where they're yeah. this unique fight with these unique conditions. Um, and you win those spirits and you can eventually unlock your characters that you can switch around to your party. You can level up your spirits and there's just a lot of excess stuff that kind of seems like busy work added on top of the basic concept. Um, but not necessarily in a bad way. Um, but I don't think you're intended to sit down and spend two, three hours on world of light. I think it's meant to be do a couple matches, work your way a little further in you know, over a long period of time. I think this was meant to last. And those of us who decided we needed a marathon so hurt ourselves. Here's the thing about world of light is that it starts with just an incredibly, unbelievably epic cutscene of basically all, uh, basically all the uh, Nintendo cinematic universe characters just getting snapped. Yeah. Right. Like that's, that's a little bit what happens. Just everybody gets snapped except for Kirby. You get it. You um, get it. Everyone gets it. Every everyone goes, uh, and you know, and I I was like, okay, this is gonna be good, you know, like holy shit, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go save the Nintendo universe, and then <clears throat> I'm like maybe 20 hours in, and there is no story whatsoever. It's just a series of fights against uh, spirits, 
and then characters that you free and unlock. Of course, I mean, it does, it does. And like, and so when you unlock them for anybody who doesn't know, you can, uh, you unlock them both in multiplayer and to be able to use in the world of light, but characters that you unlock for multiplayer via classic mode, you cannot use in the world of light until you unlock them in the world of light. Um, so I'm about 20 hours in and I mean, I'll finish it, but man, like, I, I feel like I know that I've got another 20 hours to go. Yeah. And I, I feel like it's getting to the point where it's a slog and I'm going, I'm like, I'm going to finish it because I'm fucking, ha- I'm invested now. Like I'm, I'm 20 hours in, I'm, I might as well finish it now, but I'm not in a rush to do it. Not because I, not because I feel like the game is telling me, Oh, Hey, just pick it up and pick, you know, play it as you go, play it piecemeal. It's more of a, you just, I, I feel like, I feel like Sakurai and Nintendo were so concerned with cramming as much into Smash Ultimate as possible. It's kind of like Ian Malcolm, you know, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they should, they didn't, or that they was, you know, whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should, right? And while it's not bad by any means, I feel like it's, I feel like it's way too top heavy on gameplay and with the bare minimum, like, like, I mean, not even a drop of story, man, or lore. Or yeah, nothing. it's like. It's- it's Nothing. almost devoid of, you know, those little fan service moments that were really simple in Subspace Emissary are not there. So there's there's a lot more meat and content to it, um, you know, but I don't know. I, you're right. Like, it's not really a story mode. Um, At all. Like, there's no yeah. story. Justin, what do you think? Okay. Um, I'm going to be even <laughs> more harsh. Oh. I oh. cannot. I, I straight up dislike World of Light. I have not enjoyed a second of my time with that mode. Um, even the cutscene that John liked, it was weird. It feels like it just throws you in. You have no idea what I mean that's true. There's no context first. at all. It's like, hey, there's, 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 there's no context. God. Yeah. Like the music and sound effects are mixed weird as if the cutscene's not even finished. The way it it like, there's no voiceover even. Like the last part is telling you like what's going on with like these characters getting turned into like the spirit forms and stuff. It's just text at the bottom. There's no I think, narrator. I think that like, text <laughs> is like the Blade Runner voiceover of because yeah. that stuff was not present the first time we saw that cutscene back in um the final smash direct. And yeah. it almost feels like that just got added in to be like, look, here's yeah. some explanation no, of the just, shit you're seeing. And like, it felt and honestly, out of place. I think it worked better without it. Like Agreed. it, it made it made Blade the whole Runner. thing. It made the whole thing feel cheaper. Like in um, and so and then comes to my other issue with World of Light is like it almost. It's just so it's essentially the equivalent of a just a shit ton of event matches. Yes. Um, and so I was I I know Subspace Emissary got a lot of shit. I personally liked it a lot. I liked, and I liked the adventure mode back in Melee. I liked being able to use these characters in some platforming sections, not just the regular stuff. So, like, I was bummed by that, but I knew going in that that wasn't going to be, you know, what World of Light was. My big issue is that they don't give you any kind of guidance for, hey, if you go down this route, you might find this character or something. And... I have been really struggling with even being able to do anything because Mario is the only character I have that I can competently use. Yeah, that's and, how it was for me early on because it's like, okay, Kirby, I don't play Mario. Eh. Yeah, I, I picked Marth from the start because I don't play Marth or Sheik or um, whoever the third one was. I think Villager. It was um, Villager. So I, I picked Marth because I, you know, I'm a little better with Marth. Um, and yeah. then it was like, okay, then I'm unlocking like Pac-Man and Olimar and I don't play. And then finally I got Donkey Kong Maybe. and I was like, I can see some, some of those, some of those fights it, in World of Light mode. Holy shit. The way it went for me is I got, I got, I, you know, started with Kirby, got Mario. I think I got Sheik next. Then I got Jigglypuff. And then this is the point where I just rage quit. I got the me sword fighter. <laughs> <laughs> um which isn't even an actual character <laughs> um like i wish it could have and like because it blocked off it blocks off certain paths if you take a certain path until yeah. you hit um another point like i wish it kind of gave you guidance for you know at least some of the characters <laughs> and like also when you come up upon the character um like the character encounters, it's just a generic statue. Like, it's not even like, hey, I'm going to keep going this direction because I can unlock this character. And like, I get that, you know, 
there's the whole like gotcha element with the spirits and stuff. Um, at the end of the day, though, the I, spirits I also have another issue with just because it there's so many of them and it's so random for which ones you get are are actually capable of being. Plus, like, you can power level some of those things in like yeah. a second. Uh, like, and just dump snacks into yeah. them. Like yeah, and like. So, a lot of those matches feel like they're more determined by your spirits than like your actual abilities. Oh no, they absolutely are. And then yeah. combine that with the fact that like I can't play any characters I'm even competent with, it just feels like I don't feel like I'm directly playing or participating in the game the way I want to. Here's the thing about that. here's the thing about World of Light though, and then I'll kick it back over to Derek. Is, is that you know at the end of the day, it sounds like we're kind of down on World of Light and. For the most part, I think at least Justin and I are, and I think Derek's like, yeah, whatever. Um, it, you know, at the end of the day, that's not the draw for Smash Brothers, right? Like, like, like no, no. the big draw here is like, like I'm going to finish World of Light, and I'll probably never touch it again, and and that's just fine because the multiplayer is just like the core multiplayer. I mean, it's it's Smash Brothers, and the it's gameplay so mechanics are so greatly improved, and the variety and like rule sets, the amount of stages and characters, uh, you know, old characters who didn't work have been re re have their kits kind of redone so that they feel a lot better. Ganondorf has his fucking swords. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I was so excited when I saw that little things um, like yeah. that. Yeah, so, no, like I can, I can talk about what I dislike about world of light a lot, but like it's, it's strange. Like there is so much shit in this game that this giant 40 hour adventure mode feels just like ignored. an extra option that you could ignore it's not like this is the main like it doesn't fe it doesn't feel like with a lot of games like this is the meat of the game and then there's the multiplayer like it just is another it's certainly no nether realm story mode that's for sure so so here's the thing right it, it's um i i just so i've been wondering over the like because i've spent about maybe a total of 40 hours of the game so far. I've, I've played a lot of Smash Brothers. Um, it, it helped that we had a snow day on Monday. So um, I just fucking played Smash Brothers all day. Um, but Smash Brothers Ultimate, every character in the series, um, everybody is here. Is this the last Smash Brothers game? I mean, where no, did they go from here? I mean, here's, here's what I think. I don't think this is the last one. I think that... The, the I don't think you're going to see another one on the Switch, at the very least. I, think, I it... think that the problem is that we, like, w the future of Smash Brothers depends on the future of the Switch hardware. Um, are we going to get a brand new, completely different system as the next Nintendo system, or are we getting just a Switch 2? You know, if we get a Switch oh, 2... It... It's a switch it. they'll, just, Dude, they'll just keep selling Smash Ultimate as Nintendo long as they can. Nintendo is never going back to a non-hybrid console. You, ever. Yeah. you say that, but... No. It's Nintendo, um, you never fucking like, know. Yeah, like, like that, and I, I've said for a while that the biggest thing Nintendo could do to screw up their current success is to decide they need to innovate with no. their next... Nintendo, um, no. With, with their next set of hardware instead of just realizing, hey... This is what we make now. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, I don't want to turn this into a hardware speculation. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But I think I think the fact that they went so all out on um, bringing everybody back, including characters that really like, there's a lot of characters that didn't come back that could stay cut, right? Like, there's no yeah. need for Pichu and and Doctor Mario and Dark Pit and I can't believe Fire it, Bro. I can't believe Pichu's in like, like Roy. Like, there's, there's what a nine. Fire Emblem characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as a Fire Emblem fan, I'd cut half of them in a heartbeat. I would get rid well, of like, Kong, Lucina, like, did, Roy. Did you like, really need Ike and Marth and, and Krom in the same and game? And Corrin. Like, I'd get rid of all of them just for, like, Lin. Um, but anyway, like, that's that's an aside. Um, I, think, I think the thing is, um, if Joker from Persona 5 being the first DLC character is supposed to be an indication of the kind of stuff we're looking at with DLC... And what I think that means is we're looking primarily at expansion of the game being guest characters, um, being weird guest characters, cool guest characters. So, but if they make a new Smash game, like people are going to understand if third parties can't come back. Right. So, so if they got to drop characters, it's easy to drop clones and Echo Fighters and third party characters. It's a lot easier to drop them than it is to drop like King K. Rule. You know? so, so, Derek, I got a question for you. Yeah what if we went down the line? So, so now we're on the topic of DLC characters. What if we went down the line and we gave a prediction for two characters, one serious character that you think is going to be added. And then one Joe, like, like a character that you would want to see added. Yeah. 
Okay. No, I could. I, I could. The problem I like, is, I could. Go I mean, I could, I could go through a bunch. Let's yeah. start, so so so. I'll start. I'll start. Okay. okay. I'll start. Um, series character that I think is going to be added. I think it's time. Uh, Sephiroth. No. No. I think so. But Final mm-hmm. Fantasy VII is going to launch next, sometime next year, and it is going to be the first time in history that that game has been available on a Nintendo console. There's a huge Final Fantasy push right now. You got Crystal Chronicles, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy X-2, and Final Fantasy XII, all dropping next year. Cloud is one of the most popular characters in the game, and he is also the most popular Final Fantasy uh, protagonist, who is the most iconic, most popular Final Fantasy antagonist. It's Sephiroth, and I think Sephiroth. I mean, one winged angel would fit great in the stable of um, uh, Smash Brothers uh, stage uh, stage tunes. Imagine a a level set in either Niflheim or no, not Niflheim. She's thinking Final Fantasy Final Fantasy fifteen. Imagine a stage set like in the Maker Reactor, you know, um, or a stage set in uh, again the Planet Core or or the Planet Core or you know or Nibelheim, which is what I was thinking of, not Niflheim. Or the the Golden um, Saucer. The Golden Saucer would be amazing. I think it's time for Sephiroth. Uh, and as far as as a character, I would just want to see added. Fuck a dude. Give Wart some love. Bring back Wart. Yo, I am Mario too. about give Wart, it. Give Wart some love. Have him spit some vegetables. I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm all over it. I'm all over it. Justin, go ahead, man. And then we'll all right. go to Dan. Um, so I'm going to kind of cheat with the serious prediction because I can't decide between which of these two characters from the same series would make it in, but they both seem very likely to me. Either Leon Kennedy or Wesker. Oh, it's not going to happen. Guns. They're not going to bring guns in. It's well, Joker. Yeah, Joker's already in. Yeah, Joker but, uses and, pistols. And Joker's got a pistol. But I don't. It's, uh, I don't know, man. I. I mean, well, we'll that, that's why I think you know. Joker may also not use his guns at all. So yeah, true. It'd be weird, but, I mean, but but that's why I was thinking maybe. That's why it, I was kind of leaning maybe more Smash, maybe more Wesker, um, just because he can have you know really literally murdered other, Mario. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I guess so. and they put that pause reference in. Oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> which is a very dark reference for Smash. Oh, but yes. I think I think Resident Evil is going to get a um, a representative. That's like one of the few major Japanese game franchises that has not had a representative in Smash. Oh, um, and then for kind of yeah. my more out there one, Travis Touchdown from No More Heroes. Oh, that's a good one, dude. I'm there. Okay. I'm a, I'm a huge one. fan of those games. Uh, we got uh, Travis. Travis rides again, or is it? Uh, Travis strikes, strikes, strikes again. Strikes back. Strikes again. Strikes back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I knew it was something like that. Um, coming to the Switch soon. Um, I think um, you know. I think Travis would be a really fun addition, and he's got like lightsabers and stuff. So obviously he wouldn't, um, you know, be too out there for. For Smash, like yeah. violence wise, even though those games are <laughs> very much uh, M rated titles. I mean, um, again, we got Snake yeah. and we've got Joker, and they're both from M rated games. Yep. So. And Bayonetta. <laughs> Bayonetta, yeah. Um, I'm gonna forget yeah, that. So, so I'm gonna guess I'm gonna bet on Travis. I've got another one, but I want Derek to go first. All right. So I need. Here's the thing. I need two and two. I simply cannot condense it to one and one. Okay. Um, okay. So here's my, here's my two that I think are abs not just realistic. I think they're almost guaranteed. Um, a Monster Hunter. It's almost a guarantee. I feel like with Rathalos is already in the game. Uh, we already have a basic boss stage built based off the ancestral step, um, it, or whatever it's called. So I, I think Monster Hunter is almost a guarantee. It is a super hot property right now. Um, Capcom wants to promote it. Nintendo wants to keep people thinking, hey, guess what? Monster Hunter's on Nintendo too. It's not just Monster Hunter World. Um, Rathalos is already in the fucking game. Like, it just makes too much sense. Um, so I think it's I almost a guarantee. That. I can um, see it. I think Dragon Quest character, maybe uh, Urgic from Dragon Quest 3 makes sense. Interesting. Um, because, so I'm not the biggest Dragon Quest fan in the world. Like, I've played some of the games and I like them. Um, but I recognize Dragon Quest is maybe the biggest and most influential franchise in gaming that is not, or like classic franchise, I'll say, that is not in Smash. Dragon Quest pioneered the JRPG genre. Dragon Quest three is maybe one of the biggest games in Japan, like of all time. It's massively influential on 
Japanese concepts of fantasy in the way that D&D is for us in the West. Um, so it makes almost no sense that Dragon Quest hasn't made it in yet. Um, so Square Enix is going to have a second rep. I, I think a Dragon Quest character makes too much sense. Um, so those are my two guarantees. My two oddball predictions, all right? Because Joker is in this game now, so anything goes, right? As long as it's a big enough character that Nintendo can feasibly make work. Um, Sub-Zero. No. I think Sub-Zero. Yes, dude. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mortal, Kombat no, Mortal Kombat Jeez. 11 is coming to Switch, dude. dude Nintendo is not going to let a Mortal Kombat He doesn't have to murder yards. anybody. No. He just has to be a ninja with ice powers. No, not going to happen. He doesn't have to do fatalities. Dude, I think that Mortal Kombat, there is some history with Nintendo on and off um, in the classic <laughs> games. A like, 11 is coming to Switch. It is a massive Western franchise. It's a massive name in fighting games. Um, I think, and I think that if Warner Brothers wants to put a character in, that's the Mortal Kombat's one of their few real good original, not original to them, but they own it. Like I think, Saki's, I think Saki's got a better chance of being in Smash, my man. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But um, <laughs> I, I, so anyway, I did say oddball, right? Um, Diablo. Let's fucking go. Diablo oh. 3 got the maybe first. Maybe he's a boss. Maybe he's Diablo a boss. 3, well, I don't know, man. Diablo 3 got the first ex like original unique Switch for a third-party franchise, right? It went Pokemon Smash Diablo. Um, and once again, if you're looking at if Activision Blizzard wants in on the game, like... You almost have to go Blizzard for IP and Diablo, like Nintendo wants to push that relationship. So, so that's, so, that's, those are my wacky choices. So, there. so, so Derek, 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 Derek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin. John. While we've been discussing John. this, I have had two revelations. Hit me. Okay, two characters I think we can all agree are probably, I, I know you'll fucking agree at least one of them is a lock for Smash. The first we'll one, see. Solera Vistora. There's a good chance there. I can see it. I can, I see, can it. see it. I can he's, see it. He's already got an amiibo. He's very uh, mimetic. He'd be very crazy to see him. His taunt is the, his taunt would be you know fucking praising the sun well, and the sword right and the lightning the bolts and sun yeah. powers. Pe people yeah. would go nuts for that too. Team yeah. up with I Wii would. Fit Trainer who already summons the sun while doing this. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. honestly, yeah. I think I, I can think see Solaire makes sense. Um, and it's just fucking crazy enough to where people would be like, "Holy fucking shit, that actually makes sense." I'm kind of um, into it, John. Not gonna so here, lie. I, 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 I'm digging it. Actually, here's the other one. Here's the other one. You guys are gonna love this. And and as soon as I say it, you're gonna be like, "Holy fuck, it makes sense." Knock this. No, no. Yes, I don't want it. Think about I don't it. Want it. Final Fantasy 15 is on Switch. The Pocket I, is on Switch. Square is already trash. proved. Don't want it. Square has already proved that they will shove Final Fantasy 15 into whatever they can. And his move set, his warp striking move set, makes. Perfect sense. Hey John, guess for what? a Smash game, and his final Smash. I don't, I don't Smash, want it. <laughs> his final Smash is he just unleashes the Armager. I don't now, fucking I mean, want it. it. Okay, Derek. All right. Derek, you're I'm upset because it makes too much fucking sense. No. Derek. Since we we've been revisiting, can I get can I get two more in, and then we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we we can probably talk about this it. forever. But I all right, yeah. two more. Um, and these are serious predictions. Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Reasonable. Okay, that's reasonable. Yeah. And this one's more out there, but I could see it happening. Banjo Kazooie. No way. I. I don't know. I hope it doesn't because those are terrible know. characters. I mean, I'm not a fan of them personally. However, who the they fuck were are pretty you? huge terrible. in the N64 era John's, for, for Nintendo. Have, I'd rather have and, and, and I would I, mute John. No, I would rather have. <laughs> I would rather have Colonel Tobias Bruckner in Smash <laughs> than Banjo Kazooie. But, oh my and god! And also, Mike Microsoft has liked to have little winks and nods at nintendo and i think um you know they might try to make that happen if if I microsoft wants to team up with nintendo i'd much rather see banjo kazooie than fucking minecraft if you're going to talk about you know, I, I so oh, yeah if, that's if, a, that's I, another one that could steve, steve from minecraft will absolutely be a character no. it makes too much sense no. yep nope steve from minecraft no. steve from no. minecraft is fucking coming derek no. you know it like, I'll get, yeah i'll get no no. <laughs> can, can we all agree, at the very least, that Solaire makes perfect sense? I think it makes a surprising amount of sense, yeah. actually. And he's probably fucking coming. He's already got an amiibo. 
It yeah. makes fun, like it, uh, it writes itself. Where where is he? I've got Please. him. I, oh, do you know? Here's another character, and this I, well, I know this because again, Jared, <laughs> wait, you're right. This is gonna. This Jared. is less of a review and more of a character speculation this episode could, now. This could, this could go. This could go all night. But but where is Zero? Isn't he a um? He's he an a, assist trophy. Uh, assist is he trophy. an assist trophy? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. gotten him. Mm, are, have yeah. you? Okay, because I I wasn't sure if he was an assist trophy or not. He's an assist I mean, trophy. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's a lot, but I'm he is. I have seen reference to zero. Okay, in he Smash. Is. All right. Well, so is the plan out there to actually stream some? Yeah, Smash yeah. So we're gonna call this a quits to the discussion. Um, I'm gonna clap into the microphone a little more. Um, we're gonna play a little and stream a little Smash, and that'll go up on YouTube as well. Um. So, final thoughts on Smash. Definitely uh, game of your contender. Yeah, I mean, it, it's almost unfortunate that this came out when it did because mm-hmm. it wasn't going to make the Game Awards and it's going to be too far out of mind the next time this sort of thing comes around. So it's I almost... Mean, think, a game I coming out in December DL- is almost like you're not on either list anymore. But I, I think the DLC plans going out through the next year will help keep Smash kind of at the forefront of Dude, news for a while. if they're as while. wacky as Joker, then yeah, it will. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're calling this quits for tonight. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Uh, you know the usual YouTube drills of like, subscribe, follow, all those words, verbs, things. Um, we can play some Smash. Hell yes, let's do it. Yeah.